All right, in case you missed it, this is the intro to quarter two, module one. And we're going to be talking about the building blocks of matter, and those are atoms. So just as a review from quarter one, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So has mass and has volume. So examples of matter here are a brick, a desk, a pencil, and even air. Air does have mass and it does take up space. Some non-examples of matter are things like energy, happiness, sadness, so any kind of emotions, um, things like that. So matter is made up of atoms, and atoms are the smallest possible unit into which matter can be divided but still maintain its properties. So as an example, um, if you were writing a long essay for your English class, what's the smallest unit that an essay can be divided into and still have some meaning? And that would be a word. So if you divide them into each individual word, each word has a meaning. And that's what an atom is to matter. And then atoms are made up of three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. If you look to the diagram here, we usually use a solar system model to describe the structure of an atom, although you will see in your bronze activity that that is not 100% accurate. Um, so electrons here are the gray ones on the outside of, on those rings. They're negatively charged and extremely small. In the middle, there's something called a nucleus, and that's made of your positive protons and your neutral neutrons. Atoms are so small, in fact, that it would take 50,000 aluminum atoms to equal the thickness of a sheet of aluminum foil. So if you've ever held aluminum foil in your hand, you know it's extremely thin. And 50,000 atoms would need to be stacked on top of each other to make that sheet. Then if you could enlarge a penny until it was as wide as the United States, each atom would only be the size of a ping pong ball. And a human hair is one million atoms of carbon wide. So these are just a couple more fun facts for you. Atoms are extremely small. If you took the top of a pin, you could fit a billion atoms on there. So uh, in class, if you saw this lecture, we've done this experiment in our groups. If you are at home, go ahead and complete this activity. So cut a piece of paper in half and then with each half keep cutting it in half as much as you can. Um, and go ahead and cut it as many types as you can. So pause this video, do the activity, then we'll go to the results. So I don't know for those of you at home how many cuts you were able to make, but in order to cut the paper forever, in order to make it into an atom, you would have to cut that piece of paper in half 31 times, which if you noticed was impossible in um, our classroom setting. So now let's go to the three parts of the atoms. The first is your positive protons. They're in the nucleus, and they are positively charged particles. They make up the nucleus with the neutrons, and they help you identify the atom. So however many protons it has is the atomic number on the periodic table, so it tells you where it goes. And it contributes to the atomic mass. So protons are big in this diagram because it actually gives you how much the atom weighs. Neutrons here are the neutral particles. They have no electric charge. They are just with the protons in the nucleus. And they also contribute to the atomic mass. So they, along with the protons, you add those together, you get the mass of the entire element. The last particle are the electrons, and they exist on the outer rings. They are negatively charged particles, and they are extremely small. Um, they are found in what's called an orbital, which you will learn about in the next module. Each orbit uh, holds a maximum number of electrons. They're different for each one. Um, the electrons move around the nucleus. So the protons and nucleus and the neutrons stay put in the nucleus, but electrons move around extremely rapidly and it creates what we call the electron cloud. Now it's trying to get pulled into the nucleus because positive 
charges and negative charges attract, but this gives all of the characteristics to that particular element. And if you'll notice, they're a lot smaller in the drawing. Um, we say that they have no mass. That mass is insignificant compared to protons and neutrons. The mass of an electron is about 1 times 10 to the negative 39. Now the cool thing here is that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. That's what keeps your elements neutral. You'll learn later about something called ions, but for now know that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And electrons are what participate in your chemical bonds. So let's see an example. Hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. That means it has one proton. And because it has one proton, it has one neutron. Or it has one um, proton and one electron. It actually has zero neutrons, and we'll get how to figure that out a couple slides from now. So there's one electron in the first orbital. You can only fit one more electron in the next orbital. And then hydrogen is still an atom even though it does not have a neutron. Oxygen is number eight on the periodic table. So it has eight protons, which also means it has eight electrons. Now if you also look on the periodic table, the mass number for oxygen is 16. And 16 minus the number of protons is also eight which means it has eight neutrons. So there are two electrons in the first level here and six in the second. It could hold two more in the second before it got full. Sodium is number 11. So it again has two electrons in the first shell always. Now it has eight in the second. Now that second shell is full and it has one in the third. And then if you look at the masses and the numbers on the periodic table, you'll get 11 protons and 11 electrons. Those are always equal. And the mass is 23, so 23 minus 11 is going to give you the number of neutrons, which will be 12. The center of the atom is called a nucleus. So you've heard me say that in this presentation, but it is called a nucleus. And that's where the protons and the neutrons are grouped together. And it makes your center of the atom. Electrons are not part of the, sorry. Um, electrons are not going to be a part of the nucleus. That's just going to be the center where the positive charge pulls the electrons in, but they do not enter the nucleus. Quarks are another particle that you should be writing down. These are the particles that make up protons and neutrons. So this is what protons and neutrons are made of. So if you took a magnifying glass, but not actually a magnifying glass, you'll need a chemistry microscope, and you went in, you would see that this proton and this neutron was made up of a quark. There are about three quarks, um, in each proton and three quarks in each neutron. All right, and then this is just so that you can see the weights here so you can have this comparison. So 18, 1,839 electrons is going to be equal to one neutron. Neutrons are the biggest here. And 1,836 electrons are equal to one proton. So we can basically say that electrons have no mass. And then neutrons and protons are almost one to one. So if you want to take a moment at home to copy down this chart, you can see these. All right, and the last thing you need to know, the atomic number is the number of protons or the number of electrons in the nucleus of an atom. So the electrons and the protons match. So this one, the protons of positive charge, one, two, three. The atomic number of this atom would be three. Mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the atom's nucleus. So here, I can count three positive protons and four green neutrons, so three plus four, the mass number here would be seven.
and that's going to be an atomic mass unit. So we don't include electrons because electrons have basically a negligible mass. Now this next slide is our last slide. If you are with us in class, you will be doing this activity in your groups. If you are not, go ahead and pause this video. Try and build these atoms in your notes. This is what I will be checking off for you to move on. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.